What's going on, everyone? It's the Raving Wolf, the Reformation, Keegan Dimitrovic, and I'm here today with uh, another Adam Blompier uh, reaction video where I'm going to be uh, reacting to his booking of the uh, 2016 Royal Rumble. So I've liked all these so far. So let's uh, let's see what uh, Mr. Blompier has in store for us today with the the Royal Rumble. I'm anxious to see how he books it. Why I, you tune boy. Don't mind me, I'm having a snack. Hello, I'm Adam from WhatCulture.com, and this is how WWE should book. Where I take something from now to the future, then challenge WWE to do it better because I'm a smart ass. The Royal Rumble match 2016 is probably the most interesting that Royal Rumble's been in years. Now, a lot of people are kind of like, don't mess with my Rumble match. And I was, you know, initially when I heard that it was going to be for the title, but now there are like three people who can win, which depressingly is an improvement for a Royal Rumble. You've got Triple H, you've got Roman Reigns, and you've got the beast, Brock Lesnar. And that's not even taking into account some of the surprise entrants, like maybe Daniel Bryan, AJ Styles someone th third man now it's normally bad when wwe messes with an established formula but you can't say it isn't exciting so for this one i'm going to do something new i'm not going to book a storyline i'm going to book from bell to bell the royal rumble match wwe do it better so we start out with number one gong lights go out out comes The Undertaker, dressed in his hat, his clothes. Number one. Of course he's in his... I'm not suggesting naked Undertaker come out. I'm not. Some people be like, The Undertaker in the Royal Rumble? Are you trying to kill the man? Now, he's probably going out at WrestleMania this year, and he's had, well, one last SummerSlam, one last Survivor Series. It wouldn't be a farewell tour without but I one last Royal Rumble. And he comes out number one. one. So he stands there in the middle of the ring. Crowd hopefully done. are interested. If not, that's a sad state of affairs. And then out comes number two, Finn Balor. It's basically the duel of the entrances. Combined, they probably take about 15 minutes. All smoke all brooding, all demons very slowly making their way to the ring. So we've got Bala in full demon makeup. We've got the dead man in his little sort of goth girl makeup. Now I get he why does that. you would do Taker Bala and Bala that, that one or and two, whatever Bala's actual... Is that his... Awesome, but still Taker yeah. at number one for the 2016 And Rumble. then they fight. Young demon versus old. Yeah, the Undertaker's punches away. versus Finn Bala's kicks. And then out comes number three... Bray Wyatt. Yet another Michael. smoky entrance. He makes his way to the ring. They stand there, the three of them, the three spooky dudes of wrestling, which would be an amazing stable name. Book it, Vince. And then you have your typical run of mid-carders. We have four, Gold Dust, five, The Miz, six, Stardust. The Miz gets cocky, tries to eliminate Finn Balor and The Undertaker at the same time. They turn around, grab him, <laughs> throw him out together. And then Gold Dust and Stardust, they have a brother versus brother fight because that's always fun to see. Why did you forget about this feud? And then out comes that number seven, Braun Strowman. Now it's only going to be Braun and Bray in this match. The Braun and the Brain. It's a good... Sorry, Sam, I'll just keep... <clears throat> yeah, we're going to keep it those two because ideally Luke Harper and Eric Rowan would be competing for the tag team titles earlier on in the card. I know they're announced for the Royal Rumble match, but I don't have room for them. Leave me be. So with Bray and Braun teaming up, they start to clear the ring. Braun kicks The Undertaker through the middle ropes. He's not eliminated. Same with Finn Balor. And then they clear the ring of Gold Dust and then Stardust. And they're looking like, we're spooky dudes. They go to eliminate Finn Balor, but he starts to fight back, kicks to the head, kicks to the head. Braun falls on top of Bray and hits him with a double coup de gras from the top rope. Out comes number eight, Ryback. <laughs> so Ryback gets to the ring and takes Finn Balor's head off with a clothesline. And then him and Braun Strowman square up to each other. A real meeting of the minds, these two. And they start clubbing each other. 
<clears throat> and you know they could actually get the crowd worked up if they actually started stiff clotheslining each other like something out of New Japan just properly running at each other then out comes number nine Santino Marella and this one's just for me Braun and Ryback murder him. They take it in turns to see who can inflict the most damage to the stupid Italian clown. They pick him up, they slam him, they drop him with clotheslines, they mug this poor man, and then whoop, over he goes. Goodbye, old friend. Why are you back? Out comes number 10, Kalisto. And through miscellaneous aerial fun, he eliminates Ryback, but then he gets caught by a running tackle from Bray. Wham! Wham! You Mexican man. And <laughs> so once again, Bray and Braun are back together and they eliminate Kalisto straight off the top and they are ruling the roost. Undertaker climbs back in the ring and he starts taking it to Bray and Braun. Bray goes down and again, it's Braun versus Taker clubbing each other. Fun fact, Braun versus Taker was considered to be a match for WrestleMania. I don't want that though. So we give them this moment here and the Undertaker is passed out to Braun's weird sleeper hold thingy Bray knocks him out with sister Abigail and then Undertaker is just laid out on the floor and Bray just kneels over him going follow the spooky dudes etc out comes spooky. number 11 Kane hey a reunion of the brothers of destruction they go wild on Bray and Braun tossing wire over the top rope and they both grab Braun by his neck and then hurl him over the top rope and the two look at each other realize that this might just be their last rumble match and then they start fighting out comes number 12 bo dallas he goes down to the ring sees it in the ring is the undertaker fighting kane and decides you know what i'm fine on the outside <laughs> runs around doing his yay things in the air so it's just bo dallas ignoring the brothers of destruction running in a circle so undertaker and kane are fighting each other choke slam chokeslam kane hits taker with a chokeslam goes for a tombstone that's reversed by taker into his own tombstone bang he picks up kane and just manages to get him over the top rope and he's hanging there and then bang taker is eliminated by a coup de gras from finn balor and finn balor stands in the middle of the ring alone taker now it depends if you want to have undertaker versus finn balor at wrestlemania i'd quite like that so i would have taker be visibly pissed off at being beaten by this young demon and then when he gets to the top of the ramp he could turn back and give balor the evil eye and then balor is attacked from behind by bo dallas out comes number 13 Kevin Owens, and he doesn't go for the ring. He goes straight to ringside, picks up Finn Balor's NXT Championship, rolls into the ring, and clobbers him <laughs> with it because Kevin Owens doesn't forget. He picks up Finn Balor, throws him over the top rope, holds up the NXT Championship, then throws it at Balor, saying, I'm going for the World Heavyweight Championship. Bo then hits Kevin Owens with a drop kick from so behind. Kevin Owens goes over the top me. rope, but doesn't get eliminated. He holds on. Bo thinks he's eliminated. Balance Kevin Owens gets out of the ring under the bottom rope and again team. runs around going, I did it, I did it, until he runs into a massive clothesline from Kevin Owens, who throws him back into the ring. Out comes 14, Adam Rose. Yep, he's in it because the social outcasts are now a thing. So Rose and Bo Dallas team up to take on Kevin Owens, but are outmatched easily by Kevin Owens, who's great. In fact, both yes, men receive pop-up power bots. Out comes 15, Heath Slater. He is just one man. Bye, you, bye, you. And he attacks Kevin Owens. Kevin Owens mocks Slater being like, what is all this ginger shit? And then Adam Rose attacks, Kevin Owens ducks, and Adam Rose accidentally hits Heath Slater, and then a super kick from Owens. And Owens is like, I'm beating up three guys at once. I'm Kevin Owens. I'm saying stuff. When suddenly, bang, he's hit by returning Finn Balor's sling blade. Finn Balor has only just regained consciousness and takes it out of Kevin Owens. Wham, wham, wham. So basically, if you don't want to have Finn Balor fight Undertaker at Mania, how about Finn Balor versus Kevin Owens? That would also be delicious so Balor lays out kevin owens and then leaves all three social outcasts pick up owens and throw him over the top eliminating him and the social outcasts are like we beat a top guy we're an actual thing yay and then out comes the big show oh dear the big show bonks each of the social outcasts on the nose bonk bonk just lift him up Bonk, and then all three go over the top rope. He grabs a microphone, hopefully amid booze, because we're sick of this big show.
And he says, you can't eliminate me. I'll never retire because I'm a giant. I'm a giant. I am a giant. I'm a giant. And then he drops the mic and says, come on, who's next? Out comes number 17, Brock Lesnar. Well, here comes the pain. Brock Lesnar destroys the big show and eliminates him before the next person can even get to the ring. German suplex, German suplex, F5, out the big show goes. Brock Lesnar's like, right, what's up now? Out comes number 18, Curtis Axel. And Curtis Axel also has a microphone saying, you know, the last Royal Rumble match is still technically going on. I'm going to be the first man in history to win two Royal Rumbles at the same time. Curtis Axel gets into the ring, looks at Brock Lesnar and be like, hmm, I appear to have made all the wrong life choices. And Brock Lesnar destroys him. German, 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 whoop, over the top rope. Who's next, says Brock Lesnar. <clears throat> Out comes number 19, Roman Reigns. Bodo, Bodo, Dodo, Dum, Dum, Wodo, Dodo, Dodo, So then a slugfest happens, and it's a lot like WrestleMania 31, and Reigns gets beaten down. He cannot hang with Brock Lesnar, which will feature into a storyline thing later. Reigns does get in some good offense, like a Superman punch, but otherwise it's all Brock, German, German, German. Then number 20, it's a new day. Yes, it is. Boom. Boom. And it's Kofi Kingston. Like Biggie and Xavier Woods are with him, but they're not in the match because they've already defended the tag titles earlier in the night. Remember. So again, more mic work. Kofi's again like, okay, well, Beast of the East happened, but you know what? I wasn't feeling at my A game. I hadn't taken my vitamins. So this time I'm going to destroy you, Brock. Right, guys? And everyone's like, yeah, new day. You're idiots. And then Kofi <laughs> gets in and then wham. You know that bit in the Avengers where the Hulk just grabs Loki? It's basically like that. Boom, 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 boom. Brock grabs Kofi, Gorilla Press, throws him over the top rope, but the New Day catch him. What Biggie and Xavier do is they grab their hands like that, and each of their hands is one of Kofi's feet. And they basically very slowly maneuver him back to the ring. And they raise him up, raise him up until Kofi can like. Your rollbacks are starting pretty early. Ads are always fun. Online too. But I ain't getting no premium. That ain't happening. Like, jump back into the ring. He's caught by Brock Lesnar, thrown out again. They catch him again, and they're like, right, okay, what do we do now? So they're like running around the ring, trying to put Kofi Kingston back into the match. But every time they try, Brock Lesnar is there being like, no way. But then after a few attempts, Brock turns around into a Superman punch from Reigns. New Day are like, Hooray! Kofi jumps onto the turnbuckle, is ready to get back in the match when a Superman punch from Reigns knocks him to the ground. He's eliminated. Bye bye, New Day. Out comes number 21. It's Chris Jericho, who's set upon by the New Day because of that stupid rooty tooty booty thing that he did on Raw. What was that? But then he overcomes them and heads to the ring. Out comes 22. Neville, why I, you toon boy. I said that right, Sam. You're from Newcastle, so that was correct, yes? Good! Neville and Jericho have a lovely little sequence reminiscent of their battle at Beast of the East. And then out comes 23. Ziggler, I'm here to show the rest of the game. Come on! Come on! <laughs> I'm a dolphin, He's I don't care what anyone says. Again, are... him, Jericho, so and Neville, they put on a bit of a show while Brock and Roman Reigns are a bit tired. Miz comes out to distract Neville because they're in a feud, I think, and then Brock grabs Neville and German suplex him over the top rope. Neville is the only person I can trust to do that. The Miz catches him, breaking his fall, I think. Don't our truth him, Miz. And then that looks great. Brock lays waste to Ziggler and gives him and Jericho double Germans. Out comes 24, Dean Ambrose. And finally, the brothers team up. Roman Reigns and Ambrose take on Brock Lesnar. They all brawl through the middle ropes. They don't eliminate themselves, but they brawl to the outside. And basically, they're throwing each other into pillars, posts, stairs. They are properly going at each other. Then out comes 25, 
Wade Barrett. God save our grey. He comes in, gives someone a bullhammer elbow because it's nice to see him. Meanwhile, Ambrose and Reigns put Brock through the announce table with one of their special power bombs. Number 26, out comes Alberto Del Rio. And him and Barrett start teaming up because League of Nations are a thing. Also, Ambrose gets back into the ring and gets into it with Jericho, who, remember, they had a bit of a confrontation at the end of Night of Champions. WWE Creative seemed to have forgotten it, but I haven't. So we start working the beginning of a feud between Ambrose and Jericho. And that brawl starts with <clears throat> Ambrose giving Jericho oh, the shoulder barge match. from Night of Champions. Do you remember? Out comes 27, Rusev. Yes, the League of Nations are forming pretty quickly, and it looks a little suspicious that all of the League of Nations guys are coming out one after another at the end of the Rumble. Hmm. So with the three of them, they're able to take down Reigns, they're able to take down Ambrose, it's beating up Ziggler, they're beating up Jericho. League of Nations is looking strong when out comes number 28. Of course, it's bloody Sheamus. Everyone eats a bro kick and between them, they eliminate Ziggler, they eliminate Jericho. And because Jericho distracted Ambrose, they eliminate Ambrose as well. Jericho and Ambrose brawl on the outside. So the League of Nations are doing their celebratory thing. They're like, yeah, we're the guys. What's that? They turn around, Brock Lesnar's behind them. They're like, we regret all of our life choices. Germans for everybody. And F5s too. Brock Lesnar wipes out the League of Nations. He doesn't eliminate any of them, but everyone eats an F5. And he's standing there like properly roided out at this stage. He's screaming at the hard camera when out comes 29, Daniel Bryan. Now I know, I know Daniel Bryan is not clear to compete, but after he took to yeah, Twitter to say, also. when are you going to clear me, WWE, this whole thing's starting to look a bit like a work. Obviously, I hope he's healthy. I hope he can compete. If he's not, I hope he stays out of the ring. But if he is, yeah. let's have Daniel Bryan in the Royal Rumble match, and it's him versus Lesnar. Now, I know you don't want a German Daniel win. Brian because, Brian you know, so They're what happens is though. he starts uh, kicking Lesnar down. Lesnar grabs him for a German, but Daniel Bryan flips out of it and hits him with a running knee. Brock does that awesome thing where he staggers bow-legged, but then Roman Reigns hits him with a spear. Reigns and Bryan look at each other, be like, oh, hey, buddy, and then start kicking the crap out of each other. They're interrupted by the League of Nations, so they decide, okay, we'll just eliminate you guys. And then Bryan eliminates Wade Barrett, and Reigns eliminates Del Rio. And then out comes number 30, AJ Styles. Oh, yeah. Again, hope the fans go crazy. It would be really sad if they didn't. And oh, everyone in the I ring just crazy. looks at AJ Styles, Mr. TNA. He comes out being like, hey guys, boom. And then runs to the ring and eliminates Rusev immediately. Sorry, Rusev, I love you. You're my favorite teddy bear, but you're going. Rusev's gone, then AJ turns around, dodges, whilst Brian hits Reigns with a flying knee, and then the two face up. AJ versus Daniel Bryan. I want this to be a WrestleMania match, please. AJ and Brian Bryan start brawling, and it only happens for a little while, match. but it's a thing of beauty. Daniel Bryan manages to throw AJ Styles over the top rope. He keeps himself alive. Sheamus tries to get involved. Daniel Bryan ducks a bro kick. AJ Styles hits him with an amazing springboard clothesline. Then Daniel Bryan hits him with a running knee. Then Reigns hits him with a spear. And then finally, Sheamus is gone. He has to take three pretty big moves to get him over. So, you know, might as well give him Sheamus some props why not i don't actually hate sheamus it's just it's sheamus isn't it you know just sheamus. Dude, dude, so then awesome. each man finds a corner because i love it when they do the final four thing and the final four are brock lesnar roman reigns daniel bryan aj styles so they all look at each other and then brock goes beast mode activate and kills people and honestly this fatal four-way i would have this go on for like 10 minutes because why not you're not going to have a wwe world heavyweight championship match so you might as well add a little extra to the royal rumble make it go for a while make every man seem exhausted make them all really earn their victories so this four-way happens for a while and it's very very good aj and daniel bryan are so focused on each other proving that they are the best wrestler 
that they turn around into a double spear from Roman Reigns and him and Brock eliminate AJ and Daniel Bryan. They keep fighting on the outside. And then it's just Roman and Brock, WrestleMania all over again. You can't beat me, says Lesnar. And Roman Reigns says, yes, I can. Boli dat. <laughs> and then wham, Superman punch to Brock. And then Brock counters a spear, grabs him round, turns him up into a German, boom. F5, boom, the Roman Reigns starts to fight back. He hits Superman punch, Superman punch, Superman punch, a spear, another spear, and Roman Reigns is finally getting that win back. Maybe, say the announcers, maybe he can do what he couldn't do at WrestleMania, and when he turns around to be hit, bang, by a sledgehammer from Triple H. Now, I'm not having Triple H in the match. I'm not, because, look, we are going to get Triple H and Reigns, but we should get that at fast lane because to be honest it's not really that interesting of a wrestlemania matchup first of all they fought each other loads remember when the shield fought evolution for ages and roman reigns has already kicked triple h's ass before so i don't see it as a huge marquee match it's just not that interesting to me i'd have it at fast lane sure because there's bad blood there and you don't want to leave a story unfinished but the big match at wrestlemania would be roman reigns versus the champion Brock Lesnar. So Triple H has come through the crowd, floored Roman Reigns, stands over Roman Reigns' prone body. He leaves the ring, then Brock Lesnar picks him up, throws Roman Reigns over the top, and your new champion, Brock goddamn Lesnar. Triple H takes Roman Reigns to the entrance ramp and pedigrees him on the steel. Whilst in the ring, Brock Lesnar holds up the title. So this sets up a couple of matches, Reigns versus Triple H at Fastlane, Reigns fighting for his title shot, perhaps. It also sets up Reigns versus Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania, which is quite interesting narratively. Reigns trying to do what he couldn't do a year ago, and maybe there's room for storyline development there, maybe even a heel turn from Reigns, because the thing about Reigns versus Triple H, it can only really end one way, and then it's more authority stuff forever. It also sets up AJ versus Brian, Ambrose versus Jericho, Jericho pursuing a 10th IC title reign. It also sets up Balor versus Owens or Balor versus Taker, whichever one you want. It could maybe set up Bray and Braun versus Kane or something like that. I don't know. So that is how I would, beat for beat, book the 2016 Royal Rumble match. Do you disagree? Would you rather have someone else win? Tell me about it in the comments. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Follow us on. Yeah, don't forget, subscribe to What Culture Wrestling, even though these bookings are uh, from quite a while ago. But looking back in retrospect, uh, it's, it's it's really cool to, uh, to see how he booked this match. I mean, <clears throat> I don't think Undertaker should have been a number one uh, because... If you're going to, at this stage too, if you're going to have Undertaker at the Rumble, he's he's got to be somewhere near the end, I would assume, just in my opinion. Um, so I would say if you're going to have Undertaker in it, he's got to be in, in until around the end. Uh, however, you know, having Brian come in and AJ in sequential form at 29 and 30 is extremely interesting. That would have added a lot of flavor to this Rumble to have those two come out at the end uh, too. So I wish Brian would have been cleared around this time. I know there was rumors that he was actually cleared, but like they, you know, there was some worry just because of the CT and all the injuries that he had had prior. Um, so, but if he would have been in the ring at this time, Brian and AJ definitely would have been uh, the match for WrestleMania 32. Uh, he also set up uh, Moxley, sorry, Ambrose and uh, Jericho, which which you could have done. I would have done Ambrose and Hunter, or I would have done Bray and Hunter. Uh, one of those two matches. So there was a lot of good in this match too. Like that final four with uh, Brian, Roman, uh, AJ, and Brock, I think would have been amazing because people really wanted to see Brock and Brian. And we could have got that match later on in the year. And also Brock and AJ uh, was a dream match for a lot of people, which it did happen actually the next year in uh, 2017. So that would have been cool to have seen here too, though, for th that four way going like 10 minutes. Uh, that would have been very, uh, very awesome to have watched. So the and there's a lot going on. He did a good job of building all the matches. He had a lot of people brawling on the outside after uh, they were eliminated. Uh, that happened quite a few times. Kind of felt like an Attitude Era uh, rumble. But overall, I thought it was fantastic. And I kind of wish they would have went with this in uh, real life. I mean, minus the Brian injury thing. Maybe put Undertaker there and make that the final four. Uh, that would have been really, really cool. Uh, let me know what you guys think. Like, share, comment, and subscribe.